Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Wow, what a wonderful day that it is. A new day have done. A new day is here for us to walk once more with our God. For once more to experience the glories of God here on earth. For once more to bring honor and praise to none other than the one who loved us. And he died on our behalf. Yea, the one that is resurrected, even our Lord Jesus Christ. Wow, I don't know about you, but personally I'm in love with Jesus Christ. I've fallen in love with the man Jesus Christ. For he is my savior, he is my redeemer. And when I meditate and when I look onto what he has done for me, and what he has planned for me, and what he has for me, I just overwhelmed with this great love that has displayed and is displayed. And I too, um, I release that same love towards him and I say to him, Jesus Christ, my Lord, I love you. I love you, Lord. And I lift my voice to worship you. Hallelujah. I just lift my voice in honor, in worship, in adoration of my master. And I want you to do the same. Let us learn to love the Lord. Let us learn to lay aside everything else and to praise God for the gift of life. You know, as we go to the word of God this morning, I want us to realize that we have just celebrated the rising up of Jesus Christ last Sunday where we remember the day Jesus Christ resurrected and why even today we celebrate his resurrection for every time the church of Jesus Christ meet anywhere in the world on a Sunday morning, which is the first day of the week, Actually, they are testifying and celebrating the fact that Jesus Christ have resurrected from the dead. So I want us to go quickly to the book of Acts chapter 1. This is after now Jesus Christ have resurrected the man ordained of God to begin to shape this new dawn of this new reality was none other than Luke. Luke was a doctor. He was not a Jew, actually he's the only Gentile to have penned books of the Bible. And so he's used by God to lie to us and he's lighting and to someone also who is not a Jew, who is a Gentile or a Roman person. And the Roman guys were more onto emperor worship. They were religious, but they did not believe in, they believed in other gods, but the greatest of all was to the emperor worship. But now here these men have come into conversion to the person of Jesus Christ. He writes to him, or rather to us, because this the offer us, it means the beloved of God. And you and I are also beloved of God. So the book is written to us, in essence, by the Holy Ghost, though directed to a certain person. But we, it is directing to that person, then that person is none other than you and me. Come on, somebody say, the book is directed to me. For I am the beloved of God. So Acts chapter 1, and we'll read Acts chapter 1 from verse 1 all the way to verse 14 as we expound the dawn of the new reality for the apostles. Yes, and not only for the apostles, but to each and everyone who believes in Jesus Christ. There come that moment where you have to come to soberness and realization that now you are not yourself, you don't belong to yourself. You belong to Christ and Christ is resurrected and he has a new way of doing things. There is a new way. There is, this is a dawn of new reality about the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God before or the, rather the word of God was restricted and the ways of God to a just a tiny people and that was the Jews only. God was a God of the Israelite. But now God has become the God of all the people through Jesus Christ. That's why now he is God of our Lord Jesus Christ. We don't look unto God as just the God of Israel, but we look unto him as our own God. Because Jesus said, I go to my God, who is your God, and to my Father, who now is your Father. 
So this is a new dawn. It is a dawn where now God has embraced all his creation. As many as he, because it depreciates him to save as many as will believe this cross, this death of our Lord Jesus Christ on that cross. So let's turn our Bible to the book of Acts chapter 1. And I will read from verse 1 all the way to verse 14. And then we shall expound the word of God and we shall share on the dawn of the new reality. The former theatres I have made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and to teach. We must realize the subject is not anybody else but Jesus Christ. Actually, the whole Bible is about the person of Jesus Christ. The Bible reveals the person of Jesus Christ. And we must realize that the dawn of the new reality for every human being, for every person living here on earth and also in heaven. For the Bible says he was given a name that is above every name, that every knee and every tongue, whether in heaven, on earth or under the earth, must confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. So everything is about Jesus Christ. Because the Bible says that it pleased God that the full or the whole Godhead must dwell in the person of Christ Jesus. No wonder Jesus said to Philip that whoever sees me have seen the Father. So everything rotates around the person of Jesus Christ. We cannot take our eyes away from the person of Christ. We must focus our eyes on the person of Jesus Christ. It is sad that the offerers and the other Roman people and also many people in the Gentile world, they focus on different personality. But it is time to shift your eyes from any other personality, any other thing or any other person and focus your eyes on the person of Jesus Christ, the Lord. So the former theatres have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and to teach until the day in which he was taken up, after that he, through the Holy Ghost, had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen. So Jesus Christ, he gave commandments, and we're going to know what those commandments are, and up to after resurrecting. Okay, let's continue, and let me know. Uh, okay. To whom also he showed himself alive to the apostles after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them forty days, and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. You know, it, it, I, I'm tempted to expound as I go on. You know, though we're gonna continue, but you know, Jesus Christ is the one who chooses. It is the one who chooses. No man can come to him unless the Father draws him. And you should count yourself honored, privileged, if you have come to the knowledge of the Son of God, Jesus Christ. It means you have been chosen, you have been drawn by the Father to the person of Christ Jesus, and of all the Father gives Christ Jesus, none shall he lose. So be prepared, you are not going to be lost. You are going to see the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, to whom he showed himself alive, after his, of course, his passion, his accomplishment in the cross by many proofs, being seen of them 40 days and speaking of the kingdom of God. Jesus Christ will always speak about the kingdom of God. It is time we also shifted our focus, our thoughts, and our speech and let us embrace the kingdom of God. Like Paul tells Colossians chapter 3, verse 1, he tells the church, that we must not be conformed to this world, rather that we must fix our eyes where Jesus is, that is in heaven. And being assembled together with them, and commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but they wait for the promise of the Father. So he was speaking about the things of the kingdom of God. He was telling them about the kingdom. But he, and he really wanted them to understand the things of the kingdom. Remember in the other Theophilus, ah, in the other letter, uh, on Tetis, as he called it to Theophilus, uh, Luke wrote that the, the, the gospel or repentance have to be preached through the name of Jesus Christ to all nations. And it is there where he gave them the command that they should wait for the Holy Ghost. And here again, he repeats the same. 
And this is what he says. They should not depart from Jerusalem, but they should wait for the promise of the Father, says he. You have heard of me, for John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days from hence. When they therefore were come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, will you, thou, will thou at this time restore the, again the kingdom to Israel? And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times and seasons, which the Father has put in his own power, but you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and you shall be my witnesses, or you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea, in Samaria, and into the uttermost part of the earth. And when he had spoken this word, while they beheld, he was taken up, and the crowd received him out of their sight. And when they stayed, looked steadfastly towards heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in the white apparel, which also said unto them, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in the like manner, as you have seen him go in heaven. Then, then they returned unto Jerusalem from Mount God Oliver, which is from Jerusalem a Sabbath day journey. And when they were come in, they were went up into an upper room where abound Peter, James, John, Andrew, Philip, and Thomas, Bartholomew, and Matthew, James the son of Alphaeus, Simon the Zerot, Judas the brother of James. This all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and his brethren. Hallelujah. Father, bless your word this morning as we break it. Let it be bread and health thrown to us in Jesus' name. So we see the scripture of the Acts is opens with, of course, the resurrection of Christ and with the instruction that this is everything that Jesus began to do and to teach. For we as believers, we must understand that our whole life must rotate around the person of Jesus Christ. He is our centerpiece. We must be focused onto him. We must wholly trust him. We must wholly obey him. We must follow the commands he has given. Because he said that if we keep his word, then whatever we ask, it shall be given unto us. We have to abide in his word. We have to abide in him. And then he will abide in us and he will fulfill the words that we obey. Of course, his word. So the Bible say that after he showed that he was alive, and it is important for you to realize that the, the whole gospel rotates around the death and the resurrection of the person of Jesus Christ. Because there is a reason he died according to the scripture, and there is a reason he rose from the dead according to the scripture. He rose so that we may be justified. It meant when he resurrected from the dead that the sacrifice had been accepted, that the atonement had been accomplished, that our sins had been paid for. And from hence, the doorway to heaven had opened. Remember, even when Jesus died on that cross, the Bible says the curtain in the temple was torn into two. The place where only the high priest could go, suddenly it was now being seen by everyone, and it was accessible to all. That from hence we do not need another person to lead us to the holies of holies because we have Jesus Christ. And all of us now are encouraged through Jesus Christ to come boldly to the throne of grace or to the holies of holies where we obtain mercy. Each one of us now through Christ Jesus, we have access unto that. So he showed them, him, he showed himself, himself to them. So that there will be no question or doubt. Because it was this resurrection that was so vital. And now when he was with them, as he was proving these things to them, he gave them the commandment. And one of the commandments was one to learn to wait upon him. To learn about the things of the kingdom. To speak about the kingdom of God. To know that the kingdom of God now had come among us. Remember the, the, the Jews, when they were delivered from Egypt, God said he will be their God and he was to be among them. Now Christ Jesus has come to live among us by the power of his Holy Spirit. And just like them then, they were supposed to speak 
about the things God did to them. Today, we are also expected to commune and to speak and to meditate and to desire and to tell of the things about the kingdom of God. We need not to focus. We need actually to be set free completely from the kingdom of this world. We need not to allow our mind and our thoughts to be swallowed by the ways of this world, but rather we need to influence this world towards the kingdom of God. Because remember, we are the light to this world. We are the salt to this world. It's not supposed to be the other way. We are not supposed to be saturated by the thoughts of this world. We are not of this world, by the way. We are just passageons. We are actually aliens to this world. The things we speak of, the world may not understand. The things of God's kingdom, the natural person cannot understand, actually, the scripture says. They are foolishness to the people of the world. But we are now being called into this world, left into this world, anointed into this world to proclaim the kingdom of God so that we may draw in multitude. So Jesus Christ, he speaks things pertaining the kingdom of God. The, 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 the disciples or the apostles, or all of us now, we are supposed to know that the communication is about the things about the kingdom of God. And it is sad that the church today is now speaking about the things of the world. The church is more concerned about the social well-being of being in this world. But it is time to reorganize ourselves and to begin to focus on the person of Christ Jesus and to value the power that comes by us articulating clearly, understanding, and possessing and establishing the kingdom of God here on earth, for so it's supposed to be. That's why our prayers actually are supposed to be saturated by a great desire to see God's kingdom established here on earth and God's will being done here on earth as it is in heaven. That should be our single mindset. So he continued to say that when he was with them, he said the one thing they must understand is they have to learn to wait upon him. They say you must wait. Though there is a desire to go, there is a desire to do, but we must also know that we need God's strength, we need God's power. So the, but the problem is many a times is waiting, people think, is idleness. No, on contrary. We see when they were left the Mount Oliver, they went to the upper room and how they were waiting is they spent time in prayer and supplication to God. And not only that, if you to read through, you'll see they were articulating the scripture. And it is at that moment even they discovered what the scripture had said about the replacement of Judas who had betrayed Jesus Christ. But there is a waiting. We have to know that there is God's part and there is our part. There is a story that is told that is funny of this man who was told by God he had uh, this yard and in, in front of his yard there was a big rock. And as he was praying to God, God said to him, go and push that rock. And so he went and he pushed the rock, but nothing happened. So every morning he woke up and he pushed with all his might that rock. And he pushed and pushed and pushed. The next day, the same weeks went, months went. And then after one year, he was very frustrated. And he knelt down and he lifted his eyes up to heaven, the story tells us. And he said, God, what did you mean by me pushing this rock? Because nothing seemed to happen. He was frustrated that nothing seemed to have happened because the rock had not moved. And then he had a voice from heaven that said, I told you to push, not to move the rock. So you see him, he was concentrating on the fact that this rock need to move, but he was told to push. But when he looked at his, he was told, look at your hands. When he looks at his hand, there were no more soft hands. He was able to handle things. When he looks at his body, he had really built. He was, he was now a, a, a full of muscle. He, he was now like Samson, to say. <laughs> you know, he, he had changed. So, so though nothing seemed to have happened, but we think himself, things had changed. When we wait upon God, when we wait upon the Lord, there is, sometimes we may see as if God is delaying, as if God is not moving, as if God is doing nothing. But actually, he's doing a lot. Because remember, things happen at his time. 
Jesus wanted his disciples to go into all the world, but he told them to wait in Jerusalem for the power of the Holy Ghost. We have to learn to wait for the Holy Spirit. When, as we wait, we need to know we need to be in supplication, in prayer. Actually, in the book of Habakkuk, in Habakkuk chapter 2 from verse 1, Habakkuk says he will wait upon the Lord and you see what he will see unto him. And when the word of God came to him, he says, you must write this vision down in tablet and wait for it, though it may tell it will come to pass. So in the meantime, as we wait, we begin to focus and to talk about the things of the kingdom, about the vision that God has given unto us. And it begins to be saturated within us, written in the tables of our heart. And it becomes now clear as we speak of it. And then at the right moment, God causes us to have the movement. In, in, uh, in Psalms, uh, not Psalms, yeah, Psalms 130, from verse 5, the Bible says that, uh, that I will wait upon the Lord as a watchman waited for the dawn of the morning. You see, the watchman, they kept the city, they, kept, they keep the house, they keep God, and they are looking forward for the morning. You know, they do not have power to bring the morning quickly, but they are looking for the dawn because it is their responsibility to guard what they have been assigned to. They are, of course, ready. They are sober. They don't know whether the thief will come, but they are looking forward for the dawning so that the moment they don't come, the assignment is like, eh? And we need to learn to wait upon the Lord as the watchman waited for the morning. It is something we wait. But you see, in waiting, the watchman is not idle. He's ready to act the moment something happens. But of course, he's looking for the dawn so that other people can come and the things can be more secure by the presence of everybody else. He's waiting for us. So he's waiting for us, the watchman, of course, to wake up. So that, of course, when we wake up, his job becomes easier. So we too, we must wait upon the Lord waiting for him to come just like the watchman wait for the morning but ready to act whenever we are called on to. in another place in isaiah chapter 40 maybe we can read that and then we're going to come here you know in isaiah chapter 40 there is uh, about waiting upon the lord this is what the bible says isaiah chapter 40 is of course from verse 31 but let me read from verse 27 it reads why say thou, O Jacob, and speaketh, O Israel, my way is hid from the Lord, and my judgment is passed over from my God? Has thou not known, has thou not heard, that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is we weary. There is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might, he increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They will run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. So it is good to learn to wait. So Jesus says to them, and I'm back to the book of Acts chapter 4. He says that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but they should wait. Sometimes it is hard to wait. But we have to learn to wait because we are not God. And things must act according to the planning of God. That is a dawn of the new reality. That today we have to walk with God. We have to do God's work. We are called to be part and parcel of this work. God is working. For God is busy working, establishing his kingdom, subduing the enemies under the feet of Jesus Christ. That at the right moment Christ may be revealed. We are called to be part and parcel of assembling men and women to be part of this great kingdom of God. So they were saying, he said they must wait for the baptism of the Holy Ghost. So each one of us, the dawn of new reality is that every believer must wait, must desire, must experience the baptism of the Holy Spirit. There have been a lot of controversy, people thinking that the Holy Ghost maybe he went back home. No, but everyone must wait and must desire to be baptized with the Holy Spirit. You cannot work the work of God without the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Actually, the Bible says in the book of Romans chapter 8, that if the Spirit of Christ is not in you, then you are not His. 
but he also in the same place says, but if the spirit of Christ is in you, the spirit that quickened him from the dead, then also he will quicken your mortal bodies. And he also it says, as many as are read by the spirit, Romans 8, 14, as many as are read by the Holy Spirit, these are the sons. So we must learn to wait, to be read by the spirit, to be guided by the spirit, also to be baptized by the spirit. So Jesus said, wait, and listen to what he says. Wait, he says to them, for John truly baptized with water. And we, of course, we need the baptism to be baptized in water in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. But there is another baptism. And the baptism Jesus speaks of is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And he gives an illustration that John baptized with water. And it is true, John is called the John the Baptist. He actually baptized Jesus Christ in the water. And you know the baptism that was is he was totally immersed into that water. We too, we're going to be baptized in the Holy Ghost. We're going to be immersed in the Holy Ghost. We must be immersed. You must allow yourself to be immersed or to be baptized by the Holy Spirit. Where the Holy Ghost indeed overshadows you. It is beautiful to be baptized with the Holy Ghost. To be empowered with the, by the person of the Holy Spirit. To, to be quickened. To, to experience the, the fruit, the giftings of the Holy Spirit. To speak in tongues. To prophesy. To do miracles. To do wonders. This thing, there are people who claim they have seized. They haven't seized. The Holy Ghost is still the same. He's busy baptizing. He still baptizes today. Actually, he has gone further. He comes to indwell within us. Paul writes in, to Corinthians, he says that we are now the temple of God. For the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, indwells within us. And we should not take this temple of God to make it to do evil. But rather, we must keep this temple of God to be holy. So the, the Holy Ghost now comes and he recites, not only baptized, but he recites. Even here, they were to experience the baptism, but also the reciting of the Holy Ghost within them. So this is the dawn of new reality. We as a church, we must at all times communicate the truth that there is a fresh baptism. There is baptism. There is empowerment that comes by the person of Jesus Christ. We need to experience this baptism. We, we need to experience. We need to desire. We need to wait upon God. We need to be in supplication, in desire, in looking at the person of Christ Jesus. They all continue together in prayer and in supplication, in ministration of the word of God. They did not depart. They did not consider other things as more important as seeking first the kingdom of God. Many a times people don't experience the baptism. They don't experience the, the person of the Holy Spirit because they have set their eyes on emperor worship, on worldly things. Their mind, their heart is not inclined to the kingdom of God. We must incline our thought life our way of life. We must be influenced. We must be distinct from the people of the world. We cannot just claim to be born again, to know Christ, but there is no different, there is no any change or transformation in our life by the indwelling, by the baptism of the Holy Ghost. When the Holy Ghost comes, he transforms people. He changes people. He begins to change us and transform us into the image of his son, Jesus Christ. We begin to be changed on a daily basis, renewed into the image of the sons of God. We begin to desire nothing else but the kingdom of God. We begin to speak about the kingdom of God, to tell of the love of God. We begin to value the things of God above every other thing. We begin to wait. Just like a farmer wait. The farmer will do everything else, but he keeps on waiting for the harvest. We must wait for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. So he says, as John baptized with water, we shall be baptized in the Holy Ghost not many days from now. When you begin to wait, the Holy Ghost is not far. He definitely falls. Hallelujah. 
Wherefore, when they were come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, will thou at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? The whole teaching of, about the Messiah had removed itself from the fact that the Messiah also, first of all, needed to have suffered to enter into his glory. But they were all focused on the restoration of the Israelite as a kingdom for the establishment of the millennium kingdom. That's what they were all focusing on. But there were other things that needed to be done. And we too today, we of course, we must focus onto the millennium time, onto the rapture time, onto the time when Jesus is coming. But also there is work that we need to focus on to doing. The work of being witnesses for Jesus Christ. Remember he says that there are things that God only knows. He says it is not for you to know the times and the seasons that in the power of our Father. And so he fulfills that which is written in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 30 and verse 19, that the revealed things belongs to God. Ah, sorry, the, the hidden things belongs to God and the revealed things belong unto us. Is it Deuteronomy 29? 29? Somewhere there, 29 or 30 there. So we need to remember that there are those things that are revealed. We belong to us and to our children. And there are those things that are hidden. And that is a reality. We cannot know all things. But there are things that God will reveal to us. We cannot just be focusing to know everything. But we must search to know things. Because the Bible says, of course, it is a glory of kings to search out matters. But we cannot claim to know everything. There are things that are in the power of the Father. He says we shall receive power to be his witnesses. When the Holy Ghost comes upon us, we become true witnesses. And you know, by the witness of a person, when we witness against anyone, even in court of law, they are jailed. They need witnesses, true witnesses, for somebody to be convicted. We need to be those witnesses of the resurrection of Jesus Christ of the fact that Jesus Christ has saved us, of the fact of, fact of God's kingdom and the, the truthfulness of the scripture because we approve of it, that we live it, we believe it. We need to be empowered by the Holy Ghost. And so he says, you shall receive power, you shall become our witnesses. This power continues today. We must continue being witnesses of Jesus Christ all over the world. Whenever you are, whether in your workplace, whether in the marketplace, whichever place you are, you must be one who witnesses about the person of Jesus Christ. The fact that he has come, he has paid the price for the sins of mankind. And the fact that he has resurrected from the dead and he has ascended to the right hand side of the Father and he is soon coming to establish his kingdom here on earth. Hallelujah. So they were to be witnesses beginning in Jerusalem all the way to Judea and into Samaria and to the uttermost part of the earth. And if you look at it, that's how they started. They started in Jerusalem and then they were in Judea. Then you find Philip in Samaria. And before you know it, Peter is in, in Cornelius speaking. And before you knew the church is established in Antioch. And before you know it, Paul is taking the gospel to the corners of the earth. And all of us today, we continue to do the same. The gospel is moved from different places to different places. Remember, the gospel does not move by itself. It moves when holy men who are called of God move. The gospel does not preach itself. It is preached when people obey the voice of God and they preach the word. So you and I, we must carry this gospel. Whenever we go, we are carriers of the same. We must speak of it. We must bring it to the ends of the earth. For the Jesus Christ will not come, or the end will not come, until this gospel is preached as a witness to the end of the earth. So we have a work to do. This is the reality of the new dawn. The new dawn for the church or for the people of God is that now we are mandated. We have a responsibility to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. 
We cannot just be seeking God to enrich us and not his kingdom. We must be seeking God to enrich his kingdom. And of course, in enriching his kingdom, he enriches us. Because the kingdom of God is you and I. And as we move, we establish the kingdom of God here on earth. But the kingdom of God, of course, it's not us too. It is the person of God as he does his work in drawing men and women to his kingdom. But we are part and parcel. We are God workmanship. We are God workers. Let's participate. Let's be united. And as he looked, Jesus gave this command and suddenly he was taken into heaven. For the Bible says the heaven must hold him until everything is subdued under his feet. And God is using you and I. That's why we must come together. We must use our finances. We must use our wisdom. We must use our thought life. We must be united in making sure that our generation too is subdued under the power of God's kingdom and it hears the message of Jesus Christ, the true message of the gospel, that Jesus Christ is the savior of mankind, that Jesus Christ has come to save sinners, that Jesus Christ is willing to forgive as many as will confess him as Lord and yield, surrender their lives to him, as many as are willing to repent and to forsake their sins, no matter which kind of sin, is willing to forgive and to give them a new life. There is a new life. And we are witnesses of that. So they were looking into heaven where I have been taken. They were grooved to heaven. Yeah. But they were told, uh -uh, the same Jesus will come in the same manner. But guys, you have work to do. Right? We have a work to do as we are waiting for Jesus Christ to come in the same manner. It's not going to be that he's appearing in, in El Dorado Park or in Johannesburg or in Cape Town or where? No will appear at the same time. Everyone will see him. But of course there is another moment for the church. For as many as belong to Jesus Christ, there is a day we should look onto, a day that is promised. For he said, God prepare praise for you. There is a time, something called rapture. And this rapture can happen any moment. Any time. Any moment. And we must be ready for it. That's why we must think, speak, dream, tell, communicate, meditate on the things that pertain to the kingdom of God. They continue together in prayer, in one accord, in supplication, in studying the scripture as they waited for the Holy Ghost. It was 40 days since Jesus Christ resurrected. And guess what? Actually, they waited only for a period of 10 days. Yours could be more, could be less. But remember, the Bible says, for with God, one day is like a thousand years. And a thousand years like one day. In conclusion, there is this guy, or a joke that is told of this guy who was so clever. An economist who said, wow, this is beautiful. So he said to God, God, with you one day, one, a thousand years is like one minute, right? And God said, yes. And so to you, one million dollars is like one penny. And God said, yeah, it is true. Ah, then he said, why God don't you give me just one penny? And God said to him, son, then why don't you wait for that one minute? Hallelujah. May God bless you as he waits. We are in a new dawn. Let us commune. Let us experience the baptism. And let us focus and liegeonize to proclaiming the kingdom of God. Let's speak about the kingdom to our neighbors, to our friends, to all that are our influence. And let's go beyond our influence and commune to Judea, to Samaria, and to the uttermost part of the earth. That's where we need to join and continue. If you love our message, like it, subscribe. Until next time, may God bless you and keep you and make his face to shine upon thee. God bless. I sign off. Cheers.